Today's lesson is on alpha decay. More specifically, it's the third of a three-part series on isotopes, and we'll be discovering the different types of decay. But today we're going to be just looking at alpha decay. Now when we're looking at decay in general, you'll notice that um, in this generalized drawing, they're always giving off some kind of particle. And, and it's their it's the isotope's way of trying to get more and more stable each and every time that they change. Uh, because any time that you have any more than 83, pro 83 or more protons in the nucleus, it's going to want to break apart. It's very unstable that way, and it, it wants to break it itself down into the most stable element possible. The reason it is um, so uh, volatile or, or just so uh, unstable is if we take a look at the inside of... Uh, of the nucleus of an element, they have protons, and those are going to be positively charged particles. Whereas neutrons are not, but they need to have a lot of them. The more protons you have, the even more more neutrons you're going to have to kind of keep it all together because they're wanting to move out to the outer valences because we have the electrons who bring a negative charge to the party. And because they have this negative charge on the outside, what these protons want to do is escape and be pulled apart. And the neutrons are trying to kind of keep it all together so that doesn't happen. And in this particular case, because this particle, and we're talking about alpha decay, this symbol is for alpha, that alpha decay or that alpha particle is really helium basically a nucleus of a helium. doesn't include the, um, uh, the electrons in, in that outer valence. So when it loses that, it becomes a little bit more stable because it's losing two more protons. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is alpha decay and how to solve some of the problems uh, that come with it. Um, here is the basic problem I wanted to show you. Plutonium. Polonium, I mean. And um, this plutonium is given up two electrons, not two electrons, two protons, sorry. And then it's also giving up an atomic mass of four. And as it does that, it's really releasing this particle right here. And that particle is helium. And it's, it's nucleus. It's not the outer valence. It's the nucleus because we have... Uh, two neutrons here and two protons here. That's been that's given off as an alpha particle, like this. And that alpha particle has two protons and an atomic mass of four. It gets rid of that. It becomes more stable. It's a little bit happier. Not totally happier. And here is the alpha particle that's given off. So let's get out a couple of problems going here so you can kind of see how, how to work those. So if you see a problem like this um, and you know that um, alpha is going to be um, given off, an alpha particle is given off, you ought to know right from the start that it contains uh, a neutron or a proton. It's going to give off two protons. And of course, you add the, the proton and then, of course, subtract it from there, get the neutron. And two, a 4 minus 2 is two neutrons. But what is this? What's going on here? How do we solve what new element will be made when, if it decays and gives off a um, helium um, particle? Well, we know it's given off two of these, so we're going to subtract two from there. So we already know that that is going to be 90, an atomic number of 90. And then we also know that this is going to, we're going to subtract four from here because that's what's leaving. It started with this, now it's left, so that's going to be 229. Well, how do I know what that is? Well, I look it up on periodic table. Near the bottom of the table, you'll see uh, some of these isotopes. And the isotope that we're going to be looking at after we look at the periodic table is thorium. Thorium has... Atomic number of 90, just like we uh, predicted. And because of that, 
it looks just like that. That's thorium. Now let's take a look again at the protons and neutrons. Here's the neutrons. Here's the protons. In this case right here, it has 90 um, protons. And basically what you need to do here is you'll need to um, subtract this from that. And that would be 139. All right, so that's what we, we would have uh, in terms of the neutrons and protons right here. And if, if we were to uh, look at that, divide this into that, I believe it's about 1.5, which 5.5 five, five I think it is. But that also means it's probably uh, not very steady either because, again, it doesn't have those 83 protons helping it out. It has a little bit more than that. So it'll probably be, continue to be unstable and want to decay some more. Maybe a beta, maybe a whole no, another helium. So um, that's not going to stay for very long. So let's take a look at our one more problem. And we don't know what this is going to do right here. But we do know that it's, it's going to subtract off 2. So that would be 92. And then this is going to be subtract on uh, subtract off four. That's three um, thirty six. And we don't know what that is, so we just look at the periodic table. And when we look at the periodic table near the bottom, we're going to find out that uranium has a atomic number of ninety two. And again, if we were to look at our numbers, protons, 92. We subtract 92 from 236. So let's do that real quick. 92 is 4. And 144. So there we have it right there. All right. So... Now that you know how to solve it in that direction, let's kind of take it from the other direction. Let's go ahead and take the equation going that way and see what happens there. We know that we're going to be giving off an alpha particle, this helium nuclei. We're going to start with thorium this time. Uh, thorium. Um, and it, if we're taking a look at these two things right here, we know that this right here at one point in time, we have to add these two together because we're going to kind of going to put these two things right here back together again. So we have a 84, atomic number of 84. And then we put these two together. So we're going to add this to that. We're going to add that to that. So we're adding instead of subtracting this time. So that's 2, O, Eight. So here we added four, and here we added two. And um, because of that, um, we're going to be looking at, again, we compare this 84 right here. We went to the periodic table, looked for 84, atomic number, polonium. So polonium would be P, O. So that would be um, polonium. And because of that, we went in this direction. That would be a plus 2. And there we have it. Now, there's some rules. Um, and I'd like to go ahead and go over those with you very, very quickly. And the rules basically are stating that in this scenario, when you're going in basically in this direction we have our atomic mass and in the book you'll find it uh, listed as A and what you're going to do on the atomic mass going in this direction you're going to, you're always going to want to subtract 2 for the atomic oops, I'm sorry atomic number here let me uh, this should be number and actually in mass it's four so let's just change that 
sorry about that, it's minus 4. For the atomic number, it's a minus 2, and that's referred to as Z. Why they get A and Z is probably just because of this was A, that is Z, I guess, because that's on the top, that's on the bottom, I don't know. But anyway, um, what you need to do is when you're going in this direction, in other words, it's losing um, a particle, you subtract it. If you're going in this direction, you're going to be adding it. So if we're going in this direction, use the same rule, but add 4 or add 2. That's a whole lot easier than trying to keep track of all the protons and neutrons. That's just a really easy way of just of just making that happen. So let's do uh, another problem using these rules. We know we are giving off a particle because this is an alpha um, alpha decay. Um, we have this particular element, a radon, and so which what are we going to do with this? We're going in this direction. So we're going to be doing what? Well, look at this one up here. We're going in that direction. We added them. See this little sign? We added them. So we're going to add this together. This is going to be 88, atomic number 88. And then in this direction, we're going to add it. So it's going to be 222. So we look in the periodic table for 88. And we find it in radium. So it would be R A. So let's take a look, and it's radium. So that should give you at least some, uh, some support and some help in trying to figure out these problems. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, if you uh, need to um, get a little bit more help, don't forget to come see um, either uh, Nick or myself so we can get you on the right track. So we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.